The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theatre Incorporated, presents Fear is a Little Word, starring Joan Loring and Louise Beavers. Bob Crosby is your host. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. This is a busy world. Whether you're in Hollywood or New York, it's just the same. You find people rushing around here and there, back and forth. Friends are too busy to call. Relatives too busy to write. Everybody's too busy. Yes, sometimes too busy to do a lot of things, like being kind and thoughtful and ready to lend a helping hand when someone needs it. And many homes are unhappy because parents haven't time for their children, haven't time to get together as a family. Why? Well, they're too busy, that's all. We need a little more time out, folks. All of us do, especially at home. We'd have a lot more happier homes if people took more time out for home life together. Yes, that's important, because if we're too busy to think of God, too busy for daily family prayer in our homes, then we're really too busy. Bob Crosby will return after tonight's family theater story, Fear is a Little Word, starring Joan Loring and Louise Beavers. Greenville is a small town in the south, bordering on the Mississippi. On this particular evening, a local chorus is rehearsing in the school, and through the open windows, the singing drifts out across the vacant lots to a small, neatly kept house at the edge of the town. Virgie Lee is resting contentedly in her rocker on the back porch. She is listening to the music and watching her young daughter, Joanne, at her nightly chore of rounding up the chickens. Here, chick, 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 chick. Here, chick, 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 chick. Now look, haven't you got all them chickens in yet, child? They're awful army tonight, Ma. There's just one more. My, that singing sure does sound sweet like heavenly voices, which reminds me, isn't it about time my little angel practiced up on that song she's going to sing in church Sunday? Oh, Ma, I don't want to sing in church. I'll just die if I have to get in front of all those folks and... Now, is that any way to feel? That's just plain sissy talk, honey. You got to do things in this world if you're going to amount to something. And it's an honor, that's what it is. And my Joanne is going to do her level best. But Ma, I'm afraid. Everybody looking at me and maybe thinking, what's that country girl doing up there among all those big important people? <laughs> I know a story about one little country girl that got way up among important people, even kings, and she didn't feel that way. Who was she, Ma? She had a name like yours. Her name was Joan, Joan of Arc. And she was just plain common folks like you and me. But she didn't let anything step in her way. When she heard what she was to do, she did it her level best. Who was she, Ma? You don't know who Joan of Arc was? And you a great big girl going on eight. Shame on you. I'm sorry, Ma. Who was she? She was a French girl, honey. And they came to think so much of her, well, today she's a saint. How come you know about this French girl, Joan? I worked in a big house with a French woman one time, and she was the one that told me about Joan, and she taught me how to say French words like monsieur and bonjour. Those sure is comical words. What do they all mean? Well, one of them means gentleman, and one means hello. 
but I ain't just sure which is which. Anyway, like I was saying, this French girl, she lived a long time ago, 500 years. How long is 500 years, Ma? Longer than you can think. But don't fret your head about it. Times don't make any difference anyhow. Because this story could have happened any time. Come to think of it, it would be sure a good thing if it would happen today. This old world could do with some help and no fooling. Tell me about her, Ma. Was she a beautiful rich lady with diamonds and a shiny car? No, sir. To begin with, she lived on a farm. About like the farms around here. They had two or three cows and horses and sheep, too. As I remember, it was Joan that had to bring in the milk and feed the chickens. Joan, haven't you finished with those chickens yet? I didn't want to go in the coop, Mother. They are so wild tonight. I think it was the boys fighting that trouble then. Ah, those boys, forever playing soldier and fighting with each other. What is the world coming to when even the children think of nothing but war? When will there ever be peace, I wonder? Not till the true king ascends his throne, mother. There will be no peace for France till the Dauphin wears the crown upon his head. Big words for a maid of sixteen. Tend to your sewing and your other duties and leave affairs of state to the men. But they are bungling them, mother. Yeah. I suppose you think you could do better. I could try. Oh, Joan, Joan, what are we to do with you? Ever since you started having these upsetting dreams, you they have... They are not dreams, Mother. The voices are real. They speak to me. Oh, nonsense. I want to hear no more of that. Your father will be in soon. Hurry now and lay the table and add the potatoes to the pot of fuel. Pot of food, Ma? It's a kettle that's always sitting over the fire. French folks keep one there all the time, just boiling along. There's meat in it and onions and any vegetable they happen to have handy. Ma, you're making me hungry again. Can I have just one? You cannot. Well, maybe just one. Thanks, Ma. What did that mean about all, all the Dauphin and the King? What did that part mean, Ma? Well, you see, it was like this, honey. France was all divided up into little states like, and they were fighting among themselves, and one of them, Burgundy, was the fightingest of the lot. The real king of France, his name was Charles, and he was still a Dauphin because he hadn't been crowned. He should have been sitting up there on his throne ruling and keeping the peace. But he just couldn't seem to manage it. He needed somebody to help him, somebody to lead his army and help him get crowned. But there was nobody to do it, seemed like. But what was it about the voices, Ma? What voices were they? Were they real? Joan said so, and she's a very good girl who went to church every Sunday. She heard the voices all the time, talking to her out there in her father's garden. But who were they? What did they say? They were the Blessed St. Catherine and the Blessed St. Margaret and St. Michael, who spoke to her often. The trouble was nobody else could see or hear them, so nobody believed her. But John just went on listening. John. John, we are here. St. Michael. Oh, shining one. My eyes are blinded. We are here too, John. Oh, blessed sainted ones. I kneel in all unworthiness to hear your commands. You, Joan, are our messenger on earth. Through you will God's word one day be made manifest. But how? How? You must be patient. The time is not yet. One day when you are a woman grown, you will understand much that is still hidden from you. Full instructions will be given you when the time is right. In the meantime, listen, watch, and pray. 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 All oh, merciful Father, I beseech thee, hear my prayer. I have sworn never to love man and to keep myself holy in thy truth and service. Grant that whatsoever task thou set for me, I shall carry it through to a good end, and that secure in thy mercy, I shall one day count myself among the blessed in heaven.
Was it just like you said, Ma? Was that how it happened? That was it, child. And there's no one can argue it because our blessed saint said it was so. But what did the voices want Joan to do? They didn't tell her exactly for a long time. They just kept on talking to her, trying to make her holy enough to do God's will. You see, things got worse and worse in France. The king should have been crowned if there was going to be any peace, but everybody was standing in his way. Even the other countries, the English had no business over there at all. But they got themselves together a big army and had sailed over to France and were trying to capture the city of Orleans. Joan was almost 18 then, and one day when she went out into the garden to talk to the voices, they had something important to say to her. Joan, Joan, the hour has come. We have need of you. This is the command of God. You, Joan of Arc, are to go at once to the help of the rightful king of France. Oh, but what should I have to do in such great matters? You are the instrument. A skill will be given you. Fear not. But I have neither money nor strength. No friends. How, how shall I make my way to the king? And when I come, how shall I make him listen? He will listen, never fear. And the way will be provided for you. Only never waver in your path. There is no time to lose, Joan. Go. Go at once. Lift the siege of Orléans. Save the true king. Go. Go. Papa, believe me, it is true. The voices have commanded me. I am to go at once and raise the siege of Orléans. Raise the siege of Orléans? Are you mad, girl? Have these imagined voices of yours finally unhinged your mind? What in the name of heaven would you, an ignorant country girl, scarce 18, do in battle? You would be laughed to shame if worse did not befall you. You would show yourself a fool before the world. <laughs> Durand, you are a soldier. You must believe me. By all that's sacred, I swear to you that this is true. The blessed saints themselves have told me what I should do. It is God's mission. I must relieve Orléans. Well, because of our cousinship, I'll go with you as far as Vaucolore. I know the commandant of the fort there, Captain Baudricourt. Perhaps you will see you, perhaps not. But in any case, you must be prepared for disbelief and the ridicule. Oh, this seems like the most foolish project ever I heard of. A maid to lead the armies of France. But somehow I believe in you. But we will be lucky if we get back with our heads. <laughs> Joan, as commandant of a couleur, I have responsibility. So let us be reasonable, my dear. First, you are a girl. And some, pious, honest it may be. But also I think quite mad if you ask me to send you to the Dauphin. Captain Baudricourt, as you love France, as you are a loyal servant of the one who through God's grace and my poor services will one day sit upon the throne, I beseech you to help me. Give me a horse and safe conduct. And make myself the laughing stock of France? <laughs> Go back to your peaceful Don Remy, my girl. When France is driven to ask help of her mates, she will be in bitter straits indeed. Listen to Joan Ma. Couldn't she make them understand? She tried her best. She be pestered that Captain Bodicard night and day till he was near sick of the sight of her. You see, Joan had to have help of some kind or she'd never get to the Dauphins alive. The country was just one mess of fighting and a girl traveling alone wouldn't get very far. She was sinking with depths of despair. 
when she met with this young squire, Jean de Mel. <laughs> Another rejection, eh, my pretty John? Well, patience, patience. Your chance will win old Baudrico, never fear. I have no wish to win him. Only his horse and safe conduct to the Dauphin. Oh, Jean de Met, I am on fire with impatience. Every day the siege of Orléans grows worse. My voices tell me that I tarry too long. I must find a way. Listen, my little pigeon. I have laughed at you, yes. I have teased and taunted you like the others. I have even wished to make love to you. But you assure me that you have dedicated yourself to God. Now, I say, today I have come to believe in you. No ordinary girl would have taken what you have taken. Would have come back time after time for another try. Yes, by heaven, I believe in you. And in your voices, whatever they may be. And to prove it, I am going to help you. Oh, oh my friend. I thank you with all my heart. The thing, as I see it, that most stands in your way is the fact of your being a maid. Now, you and I, being nearly of a size, how would it be if I lent you a suit of mine? Ma, did she do it? Did Joan borrow the squire's clothes? She did, baby. And she made a right pretty boy, too. She had her hair cut short, and she wore a red tunic. That way, she was able to get as far as the Duke of Lorraine, who must have believed in her, too, because he gave her safe conduct and asked her to pray for his ill health. Jo then Joan went back to Bodicourt again, and by this time, he had time to think. And he saw things were in such a mess they couldn't be very much worse. And he figured he might as well let Joan have a try. So the folks in Vaucouleur, who'd come to have faith in her and love her, fitted her out with a horse and a page's dress and to wear, and Baudricourt himself finally broke down. Well, have it your way then, Joan. Never in my life have I seen a more persistent maid. We'll be heaven sent relief to be rid of you. Wait a minute. Wait, I have something for you. Here. Take this sword. A sword? My capitan, I shall pray for you every night on my knees. No, not pray for yourself. You are going to need it. Now go, and let come what may, I wash my hands of you. By nature of a test, do you see? The maid declares she is sent from heaven. The council says, then let her prove it. Ah, and his highness the Dauphin is agreeable? The girl has aroused his curiosity. Ah. In fact, he is resolved to speak with her, but after they've made the test, his highness will stand down among us, and there will be nothing to show that he is the Dauphin. Mm. If she is able to identify him... I think she is coming. Jean of Arc, of Dom Remy, known as the May, in petition to his illustrious highness, Charles Louis Dauphin of France. Most noble Dauphin, I have come from God to help you and your kingdom. No, 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 no. You are mistaken, my child. You must not kneel to me. I am not. You are he who will one day be crowned King of France. I pledge myself to your service. My soul is in the keeping of God. Oh, I'm so glad. Joan won the test, didn't she? She surely did, child. That test and all the others. What happened when she talked with the Dauphin? Well, they were alone together for two hours, and I guess he come to believe that she was telling the truth. But there was others that had to be satisfied. A whole lot of famous men were appointed by the king to question her. But when they were finished, they didn't have anything but good to say about her. So a little while after that, Joan was summoned to appear before the king. I am here at your command, most gracious sovereign. What is your wish? Joan of Arc, 
You are here by name commander of our armies, and you are ordered to take up arms forthwith. Oh, at last, at last. Oh, Heavenly Father, bless this day and the cause we undertake. You will join the army at Tours, and while there you will lodge with the mother of my wife, Her Majesty the Queen of Sicily. Are you listening, John? With every fiber of my being. But I was giving thanks as well. You must provide yourself with a suite, a confessor, a squire, and two pages. And when you are arrived at Tours, you shall yourself indicate the blazonings on the banner that you will carry. And as soon as preparations are completed, Joan of Arc, the maid of France, will lead the armies to the relief of Olia. Sovereign Majesty King Charles the Seventh of France, to the English commander of the forces besieging the city of Orléans, we hereby inform you that large reinforcements under our command have arrived to the relief of the city, and that we are now in a position to dictate terms. You will therefore withdraw without delay or suffer the consequences. On this day, April 30th, in the year of our Lord, 1429. Here, let me try it out. No, no. Think not of me, on with the fight. For God and King Charles. On! On! And hereby crown you, Charles the Seventh, sovereign and rightful Lord of France, defender of the faith. Most glorious ruler of Gentle King, now is fulfilled the will of God that I should raise the siege of Orléans. You are indeed the King and the rightful Lord of the realm of France. Rise, maid, and in the name of France accept the homage of a grateful King and people. You are in very truth God's messenger, and in our hearts we offer thanks in humility and in joy. Oh, Ma, that's a wonderful story. And Joan was common folks just like us? Don't you understand, baby? There ain't no common folks. There's just folks that amount to something and folks that don't. Suppose Joan had just sat around saying, I can't do it. I'm only a little country girl and I'm scared. What would have happened? But, but singing a song isn't important, Ma. Like saving a kingdom. How do you know it isn't? The song you sing in church Sunday may help save somebody's soul. And that's just as important as any old king. You got to believe in what you do, honey, and then do it with all your might, and you'll find everything's going to be all right. I'll practice it in a minute. Ma, but first tell me about Joan. What happened to her after that? The rest of the story isn't so happy, baby. Joan got taken by the prisoner. Oh. Yes, honey, that was a sorrowful day, and no mistake. There were some of them that was thinking of burning her alive at the stake. Oh, they, they couldn't do that, could they? I hate to say it, 
But that's the way they treated her. But Joan didn't mind. She knew they were waiting for her up in heaven. And all the blessed saints that had been her friends for so long. So she just kissed the cross and called out one word. Jesus. So you see, she wasn't afraid. And everybody loves her. Huh. And now suppose you sing your little song with me. Like this. This is Bob Crosby again. You know we have a way of measuring success in life by fixed standards of achievement. But rarely, if ever, do you hear that he was a success because first he was a good father, she because first she was a good mother. Public opinion often seems to put home life in a secondary place. It's usually business first. Yes, today we often forget fundamentals. Fundamentals like God and family prayer. Fundamentals like the greatest success story in the world raising a good family and making a good home. And when fundamentals are forgotten, there's an emptiness in a home that nothing can fill, the emptiness that often leads to families breaking up. We need to get back to fundamentals, to the true meaning of success, to the joy and happiness every family should have through daily family prayer, to the realization that the family that prays together stays together. This is Bob Crosby saying good night and God bless you. Our thanks to Joan Loring and Louise Beavers for their performances this evening, and to Isabel and Madrid Lord for writing tonight's play. Music was scored and conducted by Max Tare. This production of Family Theater Incorporated was directed by David Young. Others who appeared in tonight's play were Patricia Washington, Janet Scott, Tony Barrett, Jay Novello, Clark Gordon, and Larry Dobkin. Next week, our Family Theater stars will be Victor Jory and Barry Kroger in Suspended Moment. Your host will be Victor Moore. This series of the Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program and by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need. Be with us next week at the same time when our Family Theater stars will be Victor Jory and Barry Kroger with Victor Moore as host. Tony Lofrano speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.